Good morning, my viewers, and today we are coming from a context where Israel has experienced defeat for a couple of reasons. They have failed to seek the will of God and went to battle against Ai, and they were arrogant and proud because they had conquered Jericho, and that assumption leads them to defeat when Achan takes an accursed thing, a forbidden thing, and hides it. My name's are Reverend Alfred Appella, and my sign language interpreter, Gray Gashanja, is going to join me today as we fellowship together with you as we reflect on the subject, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Now, Joshua chapter 7 declares, and I read, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, oh sorry, that's verse 8, sorry, verse 8, chapter, chapter 8. I'm going to read chapter 8. It says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, and his city and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho, and its king except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves, set an ambush behind the city. As we look at the subject snatching victory from the jaws of defeat, we are coming from a context where the Israelites have been defeated in battle. Remember the context, how it has gone. Jericho in chapter 6, victory. Ai in chapter 7, defeat. Chapter 8, Ai again. God now begins to give them instruction that, hey, I was actually embarrassed in Ai, but you know, God will not allow his people to be put to shame. God sends them back to Ai for battle. Now, when God speaks to Joshua, God tells him that he's going to be with him. He promises that things will be different this time. He assures Joshua and Israel of victory. And it is interesting that the Lord calls them in return to the place of their greatest defeat. Can you imagine that? That the place of their greatest defeat was the same place that God was going to use for their greatest victory. So God knew that they needed to overcome AI before they could move in and conquer Canaan. You know, many times we have this battle against the flesh. And I want to tell you this, that sometimes we are defeated by our old sinful pleasures of the flesh. AI is a is an emblem of what the flesh is to us today. There are times we go victorious against the flesh, but there are times the flesh battles against us and beats us down. How many times have you fallen and wondered if there would ever be, you, you, you'll ever get back to where you were before? Just that is what exactly the Israelites were at when they were, when they were defeated by AI. They wondered whether they are going to get victory again. And that is what happens to us when we are in the flesh. When the flesh beats you down, you wonder whether you'll be back on your feet again. Now, Joshua actually hears from God. And God, and, 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 and God tells him, fear not, I have given you into you the, the, the king of Ai and his people and the city and his land. And you shall do to Ai as the king... And, and her king, as you did to Jericho and its king. <laughs> now, to, maybe you're watching me, viewer, and like these people experiencing AI, you're experiencing the same with the flesh. I want to say that for you who have lost battle in the flesh, God says you should not fear because he's going to give you the victory. God has made tremendous promises to his children to me and you, that when we do obey and meditate on these promises, we can enjoy his victory over the flesh. Now listen to some of the promises that God has 
spoken. In Romans chapter 6, verse 14, Scripture declares that we are no longer slaves to sin, the flesh, and the devil. In fact, it says that sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. God promises you and me today that sin shall not have dominion over you. Imagine the same way he promised Joshua against Ai, he is promising you today that sin shall not have dominion over you. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, he says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That means he has made us new creatures in Jesus Christ. We have a covenant with him. As long as we walk with him, we have the nature of God in us. In fact, we become partakers of his divine nature, whereby we are given exceedingly great and precious promises, that by this you might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That is 2 Corinthians, chapter, I mean, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Friends, because we have, partake, we have partaken the divine nature of Christ, we have actually escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. These are great promises that God gives us. Jesus actually, I mean, Paul spoke to first to the Corinthians and he told them, thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The reality is, the flesh is always at war against the spirit. If you read Galatians 6, Galatians, I mean Galatians 5, Paul wrote, writes to the Galatians and he tells them, the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit wars against the flesh. The flesh and the spirit are in constant war. But, 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 but scripture reminds us today that God has promised us victory over the flesh. That no matter how many times you fought against this war against the quote-unquote AI of your life, Victory has been guaranteed because God has promised. So what does God expect of us? The lesson we learn today is that we must learn to wait on him and hear from him. These guys went to Ai, first of all in chapter 6, before they heard from God. That's why they were beaten down and defeated. But later on in chapter 8, notice what God is telling them. It begins by God giving them instruction to go back to Ai. And it tells them not to be afraid or discouraged, but to take the whole army with them. God gives them instruction. They were ready to wait on God, and God gives instructions. Me, I have learned one lesson today. I have learned to wait on God and let him lead and bring into our lives the things that we need to be there. Sometimes we are too much in a hurry, but we need to wait on him. Concerning the flesh, the work of the flesh that you're struggling with, how, how many times do you wait on him? Many times I meet many people in my office who tell me, Rev, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. Rev, what do I do? But I want to ask you a question. How, have you taken time to wait on God in regard to your issue? Because we all have issues. We all have issues. People are good looking, well dressed, smile well. I see them come to church looking nice. But even though you look nice and you have all those things and big houses and all these things, we all have issues. But the question I want to ask you today is that how well do you deal with your issues? Do you wait on God in regard to your issue? Psalm 37 verse 34 says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. Wait on the Lord. I like what he says. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. Just wait on the Lord and keep his way. Rev, I'm struggling with this sin in my life. Wait on the Lord. Lock yourself in the closet. Go down on your knees. Talk to God about that issue. It doesn't matter what it is. Talk to him about it. Wait on God. I like what Psalm chapter 27 verse 14 says. It says that wait on God and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. That's a promise. That when we wait on God and we are in, of good courage, he will strengthen our hearts. Friends, what are you struggling with today? 
like AI? Do you have an, a, a sin in your life you're struggling with? God is telling you today to wait on him. As soon as this meditation is over, get into a closet and shut down that door. Talk to God about that issue. And as you constantly wait on him, he's going to bless you and he's going to speak to you on how to overcome that issue. I leave you with that reflection. I look forward to tomorrow. Remember, we have journeyed with you from Jericho to AI. Look at the experiences we have gone through. In Jericho, we had victory. In AI, we experienced the defeat because of the sin of Achan, which is a type of the flesh that we face today. And then today, we have experienced victory again on account of waiting on the Lord. Remember, Joshua cried to God in chapter 7 and told God, God, we have experienced victory and it's very shameful. And then Joshua tells God, God, what will you do for your great name? Can you imagine that? Joshua calling on God. AI has defeated. You know, the fact that you have been knocked down does not mean that you have been knocked out. Be of good cheer. Get up from where you have fallen. Go back to that closet and tell God, God, I have fallen, yes. Forgive me. Strengthen me one more time to avenge my enemies. And they will strengthen you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. It's getting exciting here. It's going to be electric tomorrow. Join me as we continue in this reflection in the book of Joshua. Heavenly Father, we thank you and have asked that you bless us today as we leave for our places of work and in our different jurisdictions of function. Let your spirit take charge and let your blessing be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. See you tomorrow and God bless you.